Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of We Talk Photo. And this is a video only edition. I'm John Peterson, one of your hosts. And with me as always is Jack Smoky Mountain Graham. Hey, you know, this is one of the, this is a first in many ways, you know. This is our first real recording with me in Tennessee and you in Portlandia or Beaverton, wherever you are. Um, it's also the first recording with my my actually decent camera and my decent microphone back in functioning and working. So, you know, folks, this is a this is the first, and it's the first of the video only oriented. I guess you can't call these podcasts. You could call it a video. No, we'll just call it a we'll just call it a series that we're going to be doing here, which is focused around image reviews. And yeah. you know, we we started it last time, Jack, when when we were talking about design thinking and looked at a couple of images, and we've extended that out and put out an invite to everybody, and the invite goes out to you folks too, to um, submit images to us for an image review. And just like just like if you took a workshop from Jack or I, and uh, we do we do an image review partway through the workshop, and in these reviews we're really looking at composition, story, uh, not necessarily post processing, but we're looking at the constructs of the photograph and talking about kind of what works and what doesn't. Um, so today. We have two folks that have sent in some images that we want to take a look at from two different, three different locations. So this was kind of fun, Jack. This is a, this is something yeah. new and kind of taking our uh, workshop stuff on the road a little bit. Yeah, you know, over the years we've had um, people ask us to if we were going to do this, with, and because we only did podcasts, obviously it's pretty hard to do. But I, I think this is going to be a fun thing, not only for us. But for you folks, um, the only thing I'd like to say, and John and I talked talked about this just a little bit a few minutes ago, when you send your images in, and it's the same thing we say in our workshops, you can send two kinds of photographs in. You can send a photograph in that we can tell you how great you are and how beautiful it is. And we could be like Facebook and just say, oh, my, that's, the best, that's the best photograph I've ever seen, you know, or... If you have images that may have questions, I, I think, you, you know, we're not going to be mentioning names here or, or information. So it's all anonymous. If you have an image that you have a specific question or you'd like an opinion on, you know, you can send them in. And it, it, a matter of fact, if, if we get too many images, and I have a feeling we may get to that. John, maybe you and I could just spend some time together and just at least answer the folks back if they if their images don't make the video here. Well, of too, course, so. of course. Yeah. But you know, I, I think Jack, for me, going back to the what types of images, you know, when I take workshops and participate in image reviews, I primarily just put in images that I have questions about or want another opinion about because that's right. the way I learn the best. Right. You know, I, I don't need to be told that this is a great shot. I know it's a great shot. It's those questionable ones that I need another opinion on. And so that's why I love image reviews for those purposes. And, and even without formal image reviews, I send images to a, a circle of friends that I, I get their trusted opinions on. And I so I never get anything. Oh, I know. I know. I, mean, well, I know. You said a circle okay. of friends. You said circle of friends. friends. That would yeah, what yeah. Well, let's go ahead. You want to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's dive into the first series of images. So the first image, we have three images that were taken along the Oregon coast. And so this is the first of three. What's your initial so, reaction, Jack? My initial reaction is that I am a sucker for long exposures. I'm also a sucker, John, as you know, for monochrome images shot on Banded Beach. I don't know why it is. Rarely will I shoot anything in color there anymore. I, I don't know why. It just works for me. Yeah. So initially, this is going to work really well. Um, and, and you know, uh, 
it, it's usually some little things that make this photograph and it's really hard down there. I, I'm guessing this was probably John, was this in the morning? You, you I know this was evening. It is. That's why it's dark. Well, either way, do you see that bird on top of the uh top of the sea stack right there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I've probably been on that beach a, a lot and many, many, many times. And I've tried to shoot sea stacks and rocks of birds on them. And I think I have one or two that actually the bird stood still enough to see some kind of a definition on it. I yeah. love the bird up there. I really do. I think it's great. Obviously, the two rocks anchor the image, the movement of the water, um, you know, the 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 little bit of a wave that kind of breaks up that space between the big sea stack and that second rock from the bottom up. Um, it kind of adds something in the middle there. And uh, and and you have a nice angry sky. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of all exposure done on the top and all of that. But uh, you know, I, I think compositionally, this is an extremely strong image, and it works extremely well as a vertical image. Um, I'm going to guess there was a, some little bit of a crop done there because usually the vertical is a little bit wider than that normal size. But I, man, I think it's really I love the photograph. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I would echo with you. I think just to add to what you said, I agree with everything that you said, Jack. The thing that I really appreciate too in this is the space between the edge of the frame and this rock and between the edge of the frame and this rock. It gives yeah. these rocks enough room to breathe in the composition. That's yeah, the part I, I really like. Well, a lot of times, you know, when I look at things like this, um, you know, generally this is a, a really outstanding photograph and usually there's something really minor that maybe could have happened that maybe would have made this image a little bit a little bit better but boy I, I don't see a whole lot here you know initially when i looked at this if you see that swirl of water john around that first rock where it kind of cuts off on the left hand side uh, right along, no right along the edge right there and yeah. it doesn't show the whole swirl. And I said, boy, it'd be nice to see that whole swirl. But then after looking at it, it cuts off on the right-hand side too. So it's balanced. Yeah. So if you saw a swirl on one side and not the other, it might have been a little bit of a conflict. I I, I mean, other than the obviously uh, obvious long expo uh, overexposure on the top, man, this is just a great, great photograph. And you know, one of, one of the things you and I teach when we're on Band and Beach, Jack, is to try to minimize overlaps of subjects. And you can see that we have kind of a smaller rock here uh, overlapping the larger wizard's hat. And generally, I try to avoid those things. It, it's and conflicting, this, but it, it doesn't bother me in this shot at all. No, it almost looks like one rock. We know it's a bunch of rocks, but a viewer who hasn't been there might not even know that it's separate. Uh, yeah, yeah. The way stuff. they're overlapping is is really conducive to it working. I think yeah. it works really well. And the wave in the background too. Um, I will say that if if those of you, whoever this is, if you bring it into a camera club, somebody's going to scream about the fact that the horizon is almost halfway in the middle between the top and the bottom. I have no problem with it. If they tell you, if they tell you they don't like it, just be very nice and say thank you. I'm glad Smile you know. and walk away. But oh yeah, for me it works. It works fine. Yep, it does for me too. That's that's a rule, you know. In certain shots, um, camera the horizon right down the middle of the frame works can, can work extremely well. So yeah, yeah if the sky was if the sky wasn't angry, if the sky was just blue, then I'd say bring the sky down you know, a little bit above the top top of the sea stack but man that's an angry sky i, I had i need to see that much sky I oh like i love it. that sky and you know that the texture and the tonal variations in the sky really yeah. to yeah. me mimic and echo what's going on the tonal variations down here in the surf so having them balanced top and bottom really works well yeah so for the first image we ever looked at here on our new <laughs> endeavor it's a five star image. It's um, a it's a good it's image. A All start. right. All right. Let's go to the next one. Another sea stack. 
Different yeah. feel to this one. Well, John, why don't you start off on this one? Um, I love so so this C stack. It's dark and it's very big in the frame, so it has a lot of visual weight to it. Has a lot of importance to it. Um, the thing I appreciate uh, that the photographer did is that they did not, um, they didn't really lose a lot of details. This rock may look dark to you on YouTube, but there's still a lot of details left here. And so it's not completely blocked out, which is great. Um, I it, This is just a really domineering rock. And, and in conjunction with that is this cloud bank right over the top of it is also very dark and very domineering in the frame. So these two elements to me really visually dominate the, the photograph. That was the first thing I noticed. Second thing I noticed was this rock and the edge of the frame over here, wishing it I either had more space or the rock was gone. But knowing Bandon Beach, it sometimes that's the best you can get. Yep. The, the next thing that I really like is these these little surf patterns down here. Again, a long exposure helped get some of this water motion going on. And we've got just some cool surf patterns going on on the beach. So, you know, yeah, I like they're, it. they're like lines bringing you into the subject. You know, John, I, you, you know, you have the image on your screen. We're going to, folks, work on a way that both of us can share the same screen eventually. But, John, would you do me a favor just to see what it looks like and just bring the left side, crop the left side in to eliminate that space between the uh, face rock out there and that horizon. Go ahead. More, 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 right there. No, no, no. Back, back, back back a little bit a little bit there you go right there well i've got to tell you i think i like that a little better only because now you've got the right and left side balanced they're balanced so this is essentially cut off this is cut off creates that balance that we look for in photographs the other issue is that that horizon that was showing was the brightest part of the image and my eye was going over there all the time and not not glued on the beautiful foreground and this the, the obvious subject is there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even in yeah. post i would look to see if i could diminish some of this brightness that's yeah. still left and yep. really try to shift the focal point to right down here in the sand this rock and this sky or the clouds yeah just a little bit. And the other thing, you know, if you're, again, this isn't a processing thing that we're doing here, but in Lightroom, in the mask area, you've got uh, that one area where it will select the subject and it just might select that big C stack and you might just add a little light to that and a little bit of contrast or something. There you go. And just bring the, the opacity up a little bit there you go just a hair just that's beautiful yeah, just a little bit but but yeah. you know and this proves there is detail or there was detail left in this rock yes, so it was. great correct. job shooting this on the beach correct because this was a really high dynamic range scene with the sun back here through yep. the clouds and then the the face of this of course is in shadow it's not yep. an easy shot to do. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, it's. It, I, I like it the way it is here. Yep. Very yep. nice. I do too. Yeah, that was Very a good nice. call on the edit. I like the. I like the cropping in, so it gives it that balance. Yeah, and another see, another good contender. You won't see this kind of a photograph, John, here in Tennessee. I don't think we have <laughs> sea stacks. No, no. We have rocks have, in the streams, but we don't have, have bog stacks. stacks. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Ready to go to the Kudos. next one? Yes. All right. Here is a color image. Yep. Look at that. Look at those clouds. Those clouds are amazing. 
Um, so, John, uh, you know, not to be nitpicky here, um, I love the overexposure. I love the, you know, the the, the length that the, the photographer chose to use here. Um, it's really nice. I love the mist. love the feeling. It, 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 between the clouds on the right and that big sea stack, and then those kind of little rocks and then the medium rock, it's real weighty to the right. Yeah, and so I, if you were to, to align like right here, a whole bunch of visual weight over on the right-hand side. And I'm not sure if the horizon might be a, just a little tilted toward the left-hand side as well. And again, folks, I know you might think this is nitpicky, but this stuff is it's really important. It is. The, you know, the, the things that caught my eye right when this came up, Jack, was the, again, space here. Yeah. And there's a little bit of space between the top of this rock and the other yeah. rock. So I have that separation. Those are the yeah. first two things that my eyes went to. And then over to the dark visual weight that's over here. What what helps this for me is that the fact that there's that the big C stack and then there's the, the two kind of good sized rocks, one on the left and one in the back right. And I'm not really looking at the little ones sticking out. They're there. That's very nice. But the three main uh, interesting things here, rock-wise, are in the number three, which is an odd number. And we, of course, most of the time, like odd numbers, not all the times, but we most of the time. You know, I mean, it works for me. I just think it's a little bit weighty toward the right. And I love the... I love the uh, the sky, I mean, the sky is great to the left and looks like there's a storm coming in from the north on the right, uh, which is fairly typical out there. Yep, it sure is. And just, just for fun, folks, I did a little, I just added a mask over on the right uh, and tried to brighten that up just a little bit to get the tonal balance yeah. A little bit more even left to right across the image. And that de decreased some of the visual weight and it yeah. made the image feel more balanced overall. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a little thing like that. Yeah. But the exposure is done really well. And I, I like the fact that you left some, some, some good space be below the rocks in the foreground so that we have some, idea that the water is in motion that's it's really a, a great photograph how do you feel about the space on the top of this rock jack yeah, it's okay yeah I, I yeah it's fine it's just it john it's just to me it's just real weighty it, yeah uh, it, but that, that's just me i think it's great i mean i i mean i yes i agree with you i think it's a good keeper for for the person that shot it I love the shutter speed uh, that was used in this, um, and those those clouds to me are are. You know, amazing. you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another disclaimer, John. That we, yeah. I probably should have said in the beginning. And one of the things that when people come go to uh, those of you that go to photo workshops, please remember that whoever is leading the workshop, hopefully, and I we John and I both know that not everybody falls into this category, but hopefully they have been to the place that they're teaching a workshop before. And I can tell you that John and I have preconceived ideas about how certain rock formations on Bandon Beach should be photographed the way we like them, I, the way I like them, the way John likes them. And when we look at other people's photographs, we, you know, we we are very careful not to let our preconceived ideas about how we like them influence the fact that maybe our participants see them differently or better in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I know this rock, John, you know, these two rocks and the yep. little ones. Um, I've shot these walked about 50 yards to the right, looking out in the morning a couple of times, many times. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm not letting that influence me when I look at this image. It, it's a good photograph. I just oh, yeah. think it's, it's a, a little, little weighty. I think it's a little weighty. Yep. 
Yep, and there's a dust spot up here. So if you're watching, clean your dust spots. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you to the person who submitted that. Really, really appreciate you sending in those images for us to look at. Uh, let's shift gears and look at a varied set of images that was submitted to us uh, a couple of days ago. So let's take us back to winter time and look at that. I mean, well, I know where this was. I know, I know the when it was shot because I was there. John, you were there. Um. This is uh, on a road, I believe, on the east side of Jackson Hole um, that we like to take some people on it. It isn't traversed by a lot of photographers, so when it snows, it's a great place to go, and that's when we went up there one afternoon. Unfortunately, the sun came out, and, you know, it, 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 it wasn't the easiest condition to photograph in. Um, so, John, why, why don't you go ahead and start on this? And... Mm, well, thanks, Jack. You know, overall, I think it's just, it's a nice winter postcard of the area. Um, the thing that caught my eye for some reason instantly went to these red rocks that were right up here. And how the the color of those is very similar to the house. So I got this sort of visual tie-in that was kind of neat. Um, I love the scene. You know, my unfortunately, my eyes are trained to look for irregularities and things that shouldn't be there. And so my vision immediately went down here to the lower right. And I started asking the question, should those bushes be in the shot or not? Um, the, the thing that's nice about such a wide angle shot, it lets you get a little bit of these shadows that are coming into the scene. Are there enough shadows to really make it worthwhile or could those go away and we still have a great shot? I mean, the subject is all, it's, it's the house, obviously the barn. Secondary subjects are the fence. Tertiary is the forest and the surrounding hillside. Anything else is just sort of a bit player in this in this story. So to me, maybe that lower right could be gotten rid of and still retain the the uh, the essence of the photograph. But I got to think about that a little bit. What about you, Jack? I don't have to think about it at all. Would I, John? Could you do me a favor and and in Lightroom? Could you just crop the bottom up till I tell you to stop? I'm going to sacrifice those, those, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So, up, down, down, just below the fence on the left. More, 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 yeah, right there. Actually, there you go, right there. Now, bring the right-hand side in and lose that big bush and leave it right there. Now, what I would do from here, as best as I can, um, is go get in there and then content aware those clean up all of that things are coming out. I think and this is a far better shot getting rid of those things on the bottom. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, it just has to go. I know the content aware will take those out fairly well. And um, even, the other, oh, go ahead, Jack. Yeah, you got it up there. You you just saw it up in the very top. That, that that's an issue. I maybe even consider bringing it down. See those that V of trees, John, below the what you just right pointed out. Uh, bring bring the top down. No, no, no. See where that opening is on top. Keep going, keep going. Stop. Up, 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 up. Down just a hair. Lose that one tree. On the on the there you go right there. Yep. Yep. Now, having said that, folks, those of you who know me know that I am not a proponent of cropping. Can you do it? Absolutely. If you flew all the way to Jackson Hole, I think it was probably around zero when this picture was photographed. 
you know, you're going to do what you can do to save the photograph. The whole idea, the art of photography to me, and I'm not going to go any further than this, is to try to get it right in the camera and look at your corners, look at your top, look at your bottom, say to yourself, what is it in this image, if anything, is taken away and distracting from the photograph? The lower right-hand corner here was really distracting. And now you've got a, a, a reasonably, in fact, more than that, a really nice photograph. Yeah, I think it's beautiful now. I love it. And the thing I really like too, Jack, is the way this fence line curves and Correct. it curves out of the frame and it doesn't go into the corner of the frame. Correct. There's just a subtle curve leading the, leaving the image. And it's just, it's a great lead in heading to the barn. And the fresh snow on the Wyoming fence doesn't hurt at all either. No, no, no. That's beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful shot the capture that day. And, uh, yeah, I think with just a few little tweaks and, you know, yes, you can fix it and post and crop it, but why not get it right in camera? Save yeah. yourself some trouble. And, and John, maybe, you know, you had to be 15 feet tall to get this too. I, yeah, I, I maybe. You know, I mean, that's that's another issue, but I mean, and maybe, it's, maybe whoever shot this tried to do it the right way and it just didn't work out. But, you know, one way or the other, the way we're what we're looking at here is really really nice. Yep, agreed, agreed. Well shot, well done. And the All snow right, is good. nice and white. And plus white. one, plus one, plus one exposure comp. Yep. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, it's the Okie Finoki. Well, the first thing I see, John, is those lights in the lower left hand corner. This is kind of the same issue as we had in the other image, except yeah, on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I got to lose that, and I probably got to do something about the upper left-hand corner. A little um, bit right up here. These these reflections down here, I agree with you, Jack. Um, I, I love the shot. I love the light falling. I, this is what I think the subject is, and the whole reason for the photograph. Is the light falling on this tree and then this one little bush growing up in front of it. The yeah. whole photograph is right here. Yeah. Um, you know, the rest of the stuff is kind of cool, but this is the photograph. But we know what it is back there, which is, you know, it's not necessary to do anything more than it has been done there. Right, and right. You, you know what's kind of... Um, playing with my head a little bit this tree everything here seems very vertical and straight but you know how this sort of slopes off to the left is kind of playing with my head a little bit well you can unslope that if you want what's oh i could i could i could uh, what, how, how do you feel about that light that's on that back cypress on the left hand side right, right there? here that it body? tends to grab your attention a little bit it does it does yeah. Again, some of you might think we're nitpicking, but this is what makes or break a photograph. And you know, again, just, you could do it that easy. Oh, yeah. I mean, all of this stuff can go away very quick and easy, but just, you know, just dimming that down a little bit yeah. helps. Helps yeah. because, th because again, I think this is where the photograph is right here. Yeah. Yeah. And Local. taking this to Local. the extreme, ho hopefully the person shot it this way. But, but just for fun, I still get the background swamp, but now it's really clear where where I'm supposed to look as the viewer. Kind of a different feel. Kind of change really alters the photograph. It, it's kind of a personal thing. I yeah. I like the other side for respect there. I, I like I like I don't mind the background here. Yeah. So I agree with you. It is kind of, it is kind of tilting a little bit on the left hand side, as was the that that uh, banded beach one banded beach horizontal shot. But These this are just is, little things. I love really nice. love this shot. I mean, it's uh, just just lose that lower left hand corner. Just bring the bottom up to get rid of those lights, and you got a you got a real winner here. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Very nicely done. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Last image. 
plop. Um, I hope that's not human. No, I, I think this is one of those where the person might be looking uh, one of those questionable images, or maybe they like it. Um, so this is a, I'm guessing this is a boiling mud pot in Yellowstone National Park. It's about the only place you can see stuff like this. I have a few images similar to this. So I, you know, for me, Jack, I love, you know, this is really, this almost looks like a face. Here's an eye, here's an eye, nose and a mouth. Um, That's why I said, I hope it's human. Yeah. This part I absolutely love. The background I love. I'm still trying to make up my mind how I feel about the lower third of this oh. image. So, to me, I don't like. I don't really like the lower third in here. At least not that much of it. And to a, a larger extent, the lower third is very soft. So. Yes. Whoever shot this, I think you, you you shot the subject very sharp. I don't know what what aperture you used, but this might be a good if you really wanted to put that much foreground in. I, I'd maybe consider focus stacking here, meaning taking two or three images, one in the front, one in the middle, and one in the back, and then just stack them together. Well, because it's always moving, this is a, a flowing subject oh it is oh yeah yeah this is boiling mud oh 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 then forget that yeah 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 so yeah, plan well, b but, you know nobody's going to really know that that's boiling mud um the viewer's not going to know and you know it, it's it's tough um it's a tough image to 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 I mean, definitely losing some of that foreground makes the subject really pop for you. It does. It does. And then even, you know, if if, if you vignette this, a little, you know, a little bit more, help yeah. draw and point the viewer to look right in here. I mean, somebody's going to stop and go, what what in the world is this? I, I challenge 100 people to tell you what that is. Yeah, I knew what it was. Well, of course, but of course, that's why I'm sitting here on this side of the desk. Yeah, well, yeah. I, <laughs> it, 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 it's 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 an interesting image, and it makes you look at it for a while yeah. to try to figure out what's going on. Um, but you know that foreground is it's just it's too soft that it's not defined and. You know, unless you shot it with a very, very fast shutter speed, there's no way to really alleviate that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, this is like, I, I kind of look at it like most abstract images that, you know, if the artist loves them, great. Nobody else has to love them. Um, yeah, I, I, like the, I like the photograph. I just, you know, the foreground is just, that, that's the one one week link here and then. yeah it's kind of a killer and that's why i cropped a little bit of it out and, um but yeah i i think uh if the photographer likes it then great more power to him i now well, I, that, can't, I can't unsee the face but is that is that is that um is the face moving is, is everything moving in this image or just the yes. foreground no everything's moving oh, everything's moving yep wow yep so just think of boiling water, photographing boiling yeah. water. Yeah, no, it's, I've seen these in Iceland, but um, yeah. could you tell me what the shutter speed is by any chance? I could, maybe. No metadata came over. Okay. So. okay. okay. Yep, yeah, the, only, the, the only way to deal with this would be to, you know, shoot it at a very, very fast shutter speed and try to capture everything, you know, sharp. Yeah, I, I largely I think this is just a depth of field, and that's issue. just me. It, you know, if the if the photography likes it like this, or the photographer likes it like this, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. good job so, it. Well done. Thank you to our two uh, guinea pigs who submitted images for our first 
edition of this image review on We Talk Photo Video. We Talk Photo YouTube. Yeah, you know, something and, like that. We'll, we'll we'll do this, John. I would we'll have to talk about it, but I think folks, you'll be you'll probably figure on seeing this done at least once a month. Yeah, hopefully. And maybe twice a month. It depends how many images we get. But you know, email your photographs, John. Is there any specific size you want on these photographs? No, nope. no. Nope. We'll take anything processed, unprocessed, any size, raw, JPEG. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. If they if they look good on your monitor, they'll look good here. Um, don't send, you know, unless they're really great, great, great images. Don't send big raw files. Because if you send them big and they're really great, then we can. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, we can get them printed. Yeah, okay. Like no, so but folks, seriously, you know, just if they look good on your monitor, they're going to look good here. So you bet, you bet. So I encourage you know for those that are watching, if you'd like to play along with this, please send us your images. You know, one to three images, um, and send them to wetalkphoto at gmail dot com. That's mm -hmm. our standard email address and. Either Jack or I will pick them up and we'll try to include them in uh, the next episode or a future episode as soon as we can. So we talk photo gmail.com. Send us some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love to see Again, it. Again, if you have any uh, any questions or what have you, uh, comments, um, you think we're both crazy, <laughs> tell us we are. Yep. And, but just keep listening and yeah. we'll, uh, I guess we'll check you next time. That we will. We will see you folks all very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay tuned for more. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.